Good start to the innings, as we said. Uh, the question: the country's largest IT outsourcer has delivered numbers the, on the margin front, much better than estimates. But let me not steal the thunder from Agam. He's done some interesting analysis on the second quarter numbers. Agam, what's particularly standing out for you? Well, a 1.7% quarter-on-quarter growth in constant currency basis for TCS. Uh, Neeraj, you've already mentioned it's a tad below street expectations. But let's break these revenues down and see what the management has to say about the key revenues. Now, this, of course, has been clubbed when it comes to some of these segments. But let's start off with the BFSI segment. It's about 40% of the revenues come from there. And we have seen about a 1.9% constant currency growth in this segment. Now, the management has said that they are now past the fear of financial technology disrupting traditional financial services. And while visibility is low in the near term, they are partnering with their clients and working on new models. It may take a bit longer to identify which is a model which could be successful in the future. But for now, they're still working on it. And uh, that said, you know, when you look at uh, Diligenta, that continues to see momentum going forward. Of course, uh, moving on, the other crucial segment is the retail segment. That has seen a lot of weakness in the past. But this time around, too, and we have seen about a decline on a quarter on quarter basis, but the management suggests that this segment has bottomed out, and from here on, you will see improvement gradually. Uh, of course, the other segment is communications and media. That, that also provides a good 17% chunk when it comes to the overall revenues. And you know, once again, uh, that has seen about a 4.5% growth, and we, have, we continue to see momentum. But uh, coming down to the, perhaps the most important question, how does TCS position itself when it comes to its digital services? Well, this is how it works. Uh, given the fact that you know, about 20% of its revenues come from d digital services. Um, well, we're, we're looking at, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, given the fact that uh, about 20% of your re revenues come from digital services, you know, it will it, work, work across all sectors. And while, oh, while, oh, on an overall basis, we are looking at, uh, well, uh, in line, largely in line numbers. We'll wait and watch as to what the management has to say. But we're uh, largely constructive when it comes to uh, its outlook. I'm sure brokerage has probably said the same thing as well. Agam, thanks for putting that into perspective. So three or four things that Agam brought out. Let's take this discussion forward with Bhavan Shah, founder of Samiksha Capital, as well as Moshe Katri, managing director at Wedbush Securities. Gentlemen, good morning, both of you. Thanks so much for joining in. Or good evening to you, Moshe, maybe. Uh, what did you make of the commentary, Moshe? You can fault them for missing out on the constant currency performance, but you can't fault them for the commentary that they gave and the optimism that they've shown with BFSI and the other key verticals for the next few quarters? Yes, yeah, so from our perspective, the theme this quarter, and I think it's been the theme probably for two quarters in a row, is stability. Um, it's not bullish, it's not negative, but it's stability. And for a group that's been going through multiple resets and disappointments for a couple of years now, this is probably more positive than negative. So on one hand, it seems that there's more action that's getting done in terms of focusing on building the digital business, transitioning away from legacy, et cetera. That's a good, that's a good sign. Now, um, in order for us to get really bullish, in order for us to kind of understand what happens, whether retail picks up or financial services does pick up, we're going to have to wait for probably another month, month and a half, two months, uh, just until we get a better feel on the next budget cycle that looks into calendar year 2018. So, you know, as I said, for now, it's stability. Um, I think financial services for TCS probably did a bit better than expected. Uh, retail may bottom, but again, a lot of it just really depends on the budget cycle for next year. Uh, and, um, and what's interesting is that we've hosted a call with a company called ISG. ISG, um, uh, helps enterprise clients that are in the process of outsourcing either their back office processes or their infrastructure. And they said two things. They said, look, um, we're definitely seeing robust demand in, in digital, but we're also seeing a lot of the legacy companies building solutions around their digital, which is offsetting some of the cannibalization they're seeing for their legacy business. And then the other thing ISG said was that we're seeing some growth in the traditional business just because your typical enterprise is not going to get rid of its mainframe. So these are all probably signs that you're going to see some mitigating, positive mitigating trends to mm. the cannibalization that you're seeing overall. And I think the net result is stabilization, which is what we're seeing right now. Okay. Stability is what Moshe is saying. Bhavin, um, 
Uh, take the clock back last quarter, everybody was saying Infosys margins uh, after a long time uh, better than TCS. Uh, TCS has come out and delivered a very strong operational performance. The commentary is strong for the quarters ahead as well. What stood out for the most for you this quarter and are the valuations uh, cheap enough compared to the commentary for you to advise your clients or you to buy into TCS at the end of this quarter? Uh, for the next six months to the next 18 odd months? So I think uh, what was positive uh, was that, uh, you know, the large clients, 100 million plus, uh, there was a deterioration last year, you know, that has uh, recovered last couple of quarters. And there was a lot of strong uh, increase in the 50 million plus accounts, so which perhaps supports uh, the management's uh, enthusiasm. Uh, expressed about uh, upcoming, uh, you know, quarters in terms of revenues. Um, I, I guess what I uh, what I don't see is there isn't much of a free cash flow growth, and I'm very much focused on free cash flow growth for these companies because, you know, the growth itself is not that exciting. But if there is the reasonable free cash flow growth, one can count on payouts as a reason a reason for investing in the stocks. So if uh, I guess. Uh, Looking at what they have, and they had a decent free cash flow growth last year, but you know this quarter was actually slightly down year-on-year -year basis. The first quarter was up about five percent. So, you know, I think in the first half of this year, free cash flow growth is uh, relatively weak. Uh, even if there is some improvement later in the year, you know, I think we are looking at uh, sort of low to mid single-digit uh, free cash flow growth for this company, and uh, you know, it's trading at about uh, five percent free cash flow yield. So. Uh, you know, for somebody who is who is happy with about 10% uh, kind of return, I think this is a reasonable investment. Uh, anyone looking for more uh, can look elsewhere. Okay, fair call. Moshe as well as Bhavin, many thanks for joining us this morning with your quick perspectives.